If you've ever been near a hospital or a GP practice, chances are you might have come across one of these little devices and had it clipped to your finger and had a doctor or a nurse tell you your oxygen levels. You may even have one at home if you've got a respiratory condition, something like asthma, COPD or pulmonary fibrosis. Well, this device is called a pulse oximeter and they're a cheap and effective way of measuring the amount of oxygen in our blood. But how exactly does it do that? It doesn't actually take a blood sample. There's no needle or anything, it's a painless experience. So how does it actually know how much oxygen is in my blood or your blood? In this video we're going to find out. My name is Ollie, I'm a junior doctor working in the NHS in England and we're going to go through how exactly a pulse oximeter measures the oxygen levels in your blood. And it all comes down to some very clever science. Because if we actually open up my pulse oximeter here we can see a clue as to what might be going on. You can see at the top here there's a red light that shines downwards when I turn it on and a sensor underneath. But what exactly is this machine looking at? And the answer actually lies with the fact that oxygen, if you remember from school, is carried around our body in our blood by becoming attached to a molecule called haemoglobin. Haemoglobin exists naturally within our red blood cells and it's actually haemoglobin that makes those blood cells red at all. So our red blood cells travel to our lungs, pick up oxygen by binding it to haemoglobin, sticking to it, and then they travel away again to our muscles, our brain, and all of our cells which need oxygen in order to work. So coming back to our red light here, the pulse oximeter shines two types of light down through the end of my finger. The first is just red light, which we can obviously see it looks red but it also shines infrared light which our human eyes can't pick up and this is where the magic happens because blood cells that have picked up a lot of oxygen and would therefore have more oxygen bound to its haemoglobin proteins let most of the visible red light pass straight through but they actually absorb this infrared light very well so it blocks it rather than letting it pass through to the sensor on the other side. Blood without lots of oxygen bound to its haemoglobins tends to absorb and block more visible red light but in the opposite case lets the infrared light pass straight through so more of that light reaches is the detector instead. And the last remaining thing that needs to happen is that the pulse oximeter needs to be able to work out which of those haemoglobin molecules is in pulsatile blood. Because if you think about it, our heart is constantly beating oxygenated blood around the body. Once that oxygen has been used up in our tissues, in my brain, in my muscles, our veins drain all of that deoxygenated blood back to the heart so it can be sent to the lungs to pick up more oxygen. But since this machine is trying to measure my oxygen levels, it needs to measure the oxygen level in the arterial blood rather than in the venous blood, because that venous blood has already had its oxygen used up anyway, so it wouldn't really tell us anything useful. And it essentially does this by looking for a pulsing motion, the pressure differences that come from the heartbeat. And if you actually look at the waveform in the middle of the screen while my finger is inside it, that's exactly what it's found. Because this sensor can effectively see the pulsatile motion of the cells that are moving past it, it can also tell me my heart rate too, as you can see on the screen. So as I'm testing this right now, my oxygen saturation levels are at 97% and they have a heart rate of 84 beats per minute. In a healthy person, those oxygen saturations will be between 95 and 100% usually, but there are many conditions and factors which can cause it to be lower than this. And those conditions are exactly why pulse oximeters were invented, to tell us when someone might need a little bit of extra oxygen, either at home or in hospital. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this little brief look at pulse oximeters and how they work. If you found the video useful, I'd really appreciate a subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment down below. Do you have a pulse oximeter that you use at home regularly? Have you ever seen one before? Had one clipped to your finger or somewhere else? Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Take care, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.